Hey everybody, it's Chris Tipton Hurst. Well, it's not Wednesday, so it's not Workshop Wednesday. I guess we have to call it Thriller and Thursday because we were so busy yesterday that we forgot to do a, a workshop for you. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a garden style arrangement showing all the different colors. Typically, we would work in different, these are, I'm gonna mix two different color palettes together. We've got your cool colors, which today we're gonna be working with. This is called Bogota Laguna. It kind of looks like a mint. We have some beautiful purple lysianthus, some hot pink dianthus, which that's in the carnation family, believe it or not, some phlox, some astilbe that's a beautiful a burgundy color, some fresh clover, which are in a peach, soft peach color. I actually went out in the front of the store and cut some caladium leaves and some coleus. These are really pretty. And then some jasmine vine and aurelia leaves. So that's one color scheme on this side. Then on this side, we're gonna use this, look at that rose, isn't that beautiful? It's called Pink Floyd. We have some coxcomb or celosia, which is in a kind of a, a kind of a deep orange color. Some dahlias, some Arkansas grown sunflowers, some blackberry vine, some yarrow, which is called button yarrow. It's a smaller version of the yarrow we normally see. And then some orange lilies. So what we'll do first is we're gonna make a little bit of a grid with our oh, leaves on the floor, no big deal. You never know when there. Of uh, the jasmine vine. And all I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna just take this, clean off the bottom a little bit. I'm just gonna wrap it in my hand. Do a fresh cut here. Stick that in there. And we're gonna take another little root here. And then again, we're gonna take that extra foliage off. here. We're going to intersect that into there. So this gives us just a little bit of an armature to work with as far as putting the flowers in. So now we'll go back and take our blackberry. And the reason why I'm putting this in first is that I want this to show up. So I'm going to have this kind of what I call wing out a little bit. So long cut there. And we'll just crisscross this into here. We'll go the opposite direction this other blackberry vine. If we put it in deep, no one would ever see the blackberries. So we want to make sure that everyone sees these cool blackberries with a little bit unusual. There. And then we'll crisscross and come back the other direction. Those. There. Now I'm going to save one or two pieces just for the very last to make sure that I have them on top. So that's kind of made our form here, basically. So now we'll go back and add our coleus, which I want to strip that off. Kind of need to get that in the water as fast as I can because I literally went outside and cut this right before we went on the air. So it needs to condition. You probably, if you're doing garden flowers out of your yard, you probably want to cut those early in the morning and let them drink water before you start to actually design with them. So they kind of condition and they'll harden up a little bit better for you. So we'll take the sunflowers next. That's going to be our focal point. Normally we would be using hydrangeas for this, this part of the design because it's a good filler flower, but today we're going to use sunflowers. Aren't they beautiful though? They're Arkansas grown. We get them from two different sources. And then we'll take our dahlias. And there's really no rhyme or reason to this kind of design. It's very free form, very garden -esque. So I'm just going to put the dahlias in here. I leave it as much of the foliage on the top of the flower as I can, take it off from the bottom. So it has a little bit more of an unkept. Everyone loves foliage now. Take our coxcomb. We want to take that older foliage off. This, the foliage on the coxcomb tends to not hold up as well, so you probably want to take that all off because it's not going to do very well in the design. And I'm actually going to block that together. I mean, I'm going to put two pieces in here to make a bigger impact of color. So now we'll start going back and adding our pink and our lighter colors. And I'm kind of reversing this. Typically, the darker colors like purples recede to dark. So you always, in this situation, you want to have those come out from the design. If you put them in deep like that, then no one would see them because they're going to recede in color. Yeah. I'm just popping those in. It's almost looks like fresh mint or um, you know, fresh mint. 
but it's not. It's called Bagoda Laguna, which I have no clue what that means or where it comes from. But sound good. So we'll put our Phlox in here. Now Phlox to me looks like a little miniature hydrangea. to get a little pop of color. I think I'm going to spin this around so I can see that side of it. There. We have a couple of things coming up that's real exciting at Tiffin Hearst. August the 30th, we're going to have our kickoff of our Rado uh, registry area from four to seven. We'd love to have you come. We're giving away lots of door prizes. Uh, we have a lot of our reps, or representatives that can here from our different lines that talk to you about their lines that they have here at the store. And then also the Arkansas Forest Conventions. In two weeks, it's in Hot Springs. If you're involved in the flower business, we'd love to have you be a member of the Arkansas Forest Association. It's in Hot Springs. And if you have any questions, just you may call here at the store at, at 501 or you call the 1-800-666-3333. And if I don't know the answer, I can get someone to get the answer for you about the horse convention, Arkansas Horse Convention. So I can add a little bit more purple here. I love this mantis. It's just such a beautiful, pure purple color. I'm going to spin you around again one more time. I think that helps for me to spin the arrangement. It's going to be trying to do it backward for you. That. Add a little bit more purple on this side. There. Now something that I always do, a lot of people don't, but I always add my lilies in last. So we'll put those in here in a second. But the reason why I do that, that lilies are so fragile that if you work with them, you put them in first because they're such a focal point at the end. I mean, focal point in the design, a lot of times you're going to beat and bruise those up. Oh, and I've got our roses too. Hang on, let me pop those in here as well. These are called Pink Floyd, which that's kind of an awesome name. Especially if you're, for those in the younger, younger generation, you may not understand that much as people my age, but it's pretty funny. And there's a couple of dahlia, a couple of palladium leaves. Again, and here I'll add that other pink, pink Floyd rose right on the top, so we can still pick up a little bit of the color from here to here. And then I'm going to layer a little bit of this yarrow button right on top of that sunflower to have a little bit bigger impact of yellow. Oh, also at the Arkansas Forest Convention, I'm actually doing a hands-on workshop. Uh, it's to raise funds, of course, for the Arkansas Forest Group. It'll be on Sunday morning. Um, it's going to be called From the Garden to the Table. And we're actually going to be working on free-form arrangements like this. But Seneca Cells is going to be part of our sponsorship, and they're going to give us some containers. And they have a new grid by Holly Chapel. So it's going to be really cool to work with that, that product. So you can see I put that orange right in the middle, so it has a little bit of air around it. You're probably wondering why I had the hole there, but that's what that's about. And now I'm going to go back at the very end and put just a few pieces of break of this beautiful jasmine vine on top. It's kind of like a netting, just like a spider web netting would be. trail out and flow onto the table. The great thing about this kind of vine, you actually can use honeysuckle vine if you want to. This is jasmine vine, but if the foliage starts to fall, you just strip that off and you can still use the vine, of course. So let me turn that around one more time. there. 
there. And one more vinyl on top of this. That turned out right pretty for making it on the fly. But there you have it. So come see us at Tipton Hearst. I guess we'll call this Thriller Thursday instead of Workshop Wednesday. And we'll try to be back on Wednesday on schedule. So come back and see us. I'm Chris at Tipton Hearst, and thanks for watching.